Good morning, Mark Sutt of HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It is Friday, the 6th day of November 2020, and we have to start dealing with what is going to once again be Tropical Storm Ada, now just a depression. I say just a depression. It is certainly bringing impacts to parts of Central America still. Going to have impacts for the Cayman Islands, Cuba, and then eventually Florida over the next several days, and we might have to be dealing with this system for many days. So let's just get on with it and show you what we know, and then we will do a little bit of guesswork in terms of what we don't know and what could happen. First of all, the satellite picture this morning, fairly remarkable compared to what we saw the last day or so when the low-level circulation was over Honduras here, and it was virtually convection free. Well, that has changed today. Now, whatever low level center there was has moved out over the Gulf of Honduras here and has become much more convectively active. And that's just a fancy way of saying that there's a lot of thunderstorm activity or upward motion. Convection is just the upward motion. In this case, thunderstorms, uh, just again, a fancy way of saying it. So much more convection associated with it. We still have these strong upper level winds on the north side of all of this, but everything is kind of moving in the same direction. And so the shear is not quite as prominent since things are gonna kind of be moving together. Uh, we're not gonna be looking at ideal conditions, which is obviously very good news, but conditions should be favorable enough for tropical depression Ada to become tropical storm Ada again in this region. And it's gonna bring a lot of heavy rain to uh, still parts of Central America, but eventually, as I mentioned, to the Cayman Islands over here, uh, where there's already a tropical storm watch, and then we're gonna have to watch this for Cuba, eventually parts of the Bahamas and South Florida, and then maybe even elsewhere in Florida from there. So this is the beginning of it. Now that it's over the water, for the most part, uh, we can start to track this low level vorticity, the center, the heartbeat, if you will, and there it is right there, very easy to pick out, starting to come together right here in the Gulf of Honduras. And again, it's gonna move off in this general direction over the next day or so, and then get out somewhere over the Florida Straits, and then kind of pinwheel back in as very strong high pressure for this time of year. And that is the key. We're gonna see this big old southeastern ridge build in and kind of block Ada from easily just heading out to sea. Uh, there's a good friend of mine. His name is Zach Fredella. I like dropping names, but he is. He's a good friend of mine. I knew Zach before. I knew him when he was in high school. Uh, he is down in New Orleans as a meteorologist, works down at Fox 8, I think it is. Uh, I hope I got that right. And he had a very good way of putting it that, you know, curving out to sea was so last year. And, you know, this is 2020. They don't if they're trapped on this side of the basin, they don't seem to curve out to sea. And that's gonna be the situation with Ada here, this high that's gonna block it over the Atlantic, not gonna allow it to just curve out past Bermuda or anything like that. There's no escape route. In fact, the Southeast over the next several days is gonna be quite above normal temperature wise, sort of a revisit of Indian summer as it's called. And that is the setup there that is gonna help Ada not only get trapped, but also potentially to strengthen, and maybe it strengthens into a hurricane. I was, you know, fairly, whoops, trying to get rid of me. Hi, bye. I was fairly confident yesterday that it was gonna be loosely organized and not too big of a deal wind and surge wise. I'm still not overly concerned, but the threat that this becomes a minimal hurricane, that's just a weird word, minimal. A hurricane is a hurricane, but that is starting to increase and it's something that we have to watch for uh, over the next few days. So here's the Hurricane Center track map. We can take a look at this. Great dashboard from Levi Cowan's website there. Uh, you see the envelope of uh, the cone of uncertainty here encompassing a good deal of Florida, uh, certainly central Cuba, the Cayman Islands, outside of the cone of uncertainty, but this cone does not tell you about impacts. It's only statistically where the center should be and has been over previous seasons. It has nothing to do with the impacts and what may happen. It has everything to do with where the center is forecast to be. So just keep that in mind. If you're not in the cone, it doesn't mean you won't have impacts. 
In fact, there's going to be very heavy rain along parts of the Florida Peninsula where you're not in the cone of uncertainty. The cone is just for tracking and keeping track of the center historically. So here's an analysis. The surface low now squarely out over the water. We know that. So again, we can start tracking that and the vortex trackers in the various algorithms of the fancy computer models. Those will have a much better time. And we're starting to see this pattern develop here that it's going to swing hard right, fairly hard right, come back towards the peninsula, South Florida. Is it just going to brush the Keys? Do we get a landfall near Miami, farther south towards Homestead? And then does it curve back towards the Panhandle, the uh, Nature Coast, I think it's called, right? The Treasure Coast is on the east side. Homosassa up to Cedar Key, the Big Bend, maybe. And we got to watch this because now we're talking about the potential for a multi-day event for millions of people in Florida. Now, let me be very clear. I don't see any indications that this is going to have a chance to rapidly intensify and become a major hurricane where we have to worry about widespread structural damage, um, you know, something like what Zeta attempted to do. It's not out of the realm of possibility. You never say, oh, it's never going to happen. We learned a lesson with that, with Zeta, uh, as different people were thinking that the cooler gulf temperatures along the shelf waters were going to prevent it from being too big of a problem. Well, they were wrong, and you know, sometimes you're wrong. you got to look at the bigger picture. And this bigger picture is more complicated than the situation was for Zeta. The model guidance is not giving me a lot of clues just yet. Um, and I think that's going to start to change. Today is the day. As that low-level center gets out there, gets better organized, I think the models are going to pick up on it better, and we will get a better handle on the intensity of what's going to happen. But please don't focus. you got to do me a favor here. we got to show that we've learned something from Mark Suddoth here over the years. We look at that word hurricane, and it's just like that movie Jaws, when the mayor tells the chief, you know, you say shark, and everybody gets upset, right? Uh, that's my chat that's uh, beeping. Let me see where I can mute that. Hello, we're going to visit this in just a moment. Um, and then you say Barracuda. You know, people are like, well, what? You know, same with Tropical Storm versus Hurricane. Category 1 Hurricane versus 3, 4, or 5. You just got to take this seriously. There's going to be a tremendous amount of heavy rainfall. going to be some storm surge, depending on where this sets up. Some power outages, maybe massive power outages and some structural damage. You know, we're looking at low to moderate impacts overall. Is it a high impact event? Uh, probably from the rainfall side. I would say that parts of South Florida here are going to have a high impact event from the heavy rain, and we'll visit that uh, particular hazard in just a moment. So that's the uh, different hurricane models, etc., etc. Oh, I almost got it. <laughs> it just took me a half second to correct myself. Um, it's a whole grammar thing. This is the GFS ensemble, and if we outline this and just give it a red once over, you get the idea, you know, we've got this sort of snake look to it, right? The potential, again, for a rather prolonged period of nastiness for Florida, all this talk, it's just kind of ironic. Florida did not have a, an impact directly in the peninsula from a hurricane this year. And now you might have one that will literally menace the area. And that's an appropriate word. It's going to menace the area. I didn't say devastate. It's going to be menacing, you know, aggravating, sticking around, um, impacts that just get on your nerves but are not hopefully on the side of severe, right? But it's going to be menacing. You know, that's a good word for this. It's going to menace the area, um, but we got to keep it in perspective. It's no Irma. We're not seeing that. But it's also not a nothing event. It's, a, it's not a non-event. Does that make sense? So do not dismiss it, but do not get too concerned with it that, oh my gosh, we got another Irma coming, and with all the other stuff going on, and you know what I'm talking about, you got to stay focused on this if you're down in Florida, and just keep your cool about it, right? Keep your, your focus on people that can you can rely on. Uh, I'm hopefully one of them, but I'm not everything. Max Mayfield, down in South Florida, he's got your back. I think he's kind of out of the business, but you can follow him on Twitter. And if you're friends with him on Facebook, he's still going to be tweeting. National Weather Service, Miami, 
Uh, they're an obvious great follow. Just the National Hurricane Center. When you start hearing rumors and craziness when it comes to weather in a situation like this with the pending incredible unrest that is undoubtedly going to come when the election gets settled, whatever that means, and the ongoing increase in pandemic issues, this is the last thing we need, but I need you to be able to focus on it and understand the impacts instead of worrying over stuff that you're reading where somebody posts false information, false graphics, maybe one cherry-picked model that shows it becoming really strong. I don't know. Screw all of that. Focus on what we know and the people that can you can depend on. You know, Levi Cowan right here, tropicaltidbits.com. He's going to post video blogs. Watch them. I'm not in competition with these people. You know, if he has 50,000 views on his video and I have 5,000, great. Awesome. Because Levi is, he knows what he's talking about. All right, so you understand the gist here. Let's keep our cool and be ready for this because it's going to be a prolonged event. Some of the things in the favor of potential strengthening, yes, the water temperatures, the upper ocean heat content still on the formidable side, meaning, you know, it's high. It's high enough. It's not peak season, but you do not need peak season to get high impact hurricane events. So the upper ocean heat content, though chiseling away, is still formidable enough that we could have a potential hurricane on our hands. The actual sea surface temperatures uh, along the southeast part of the coast here, I know the map cuts off, but it's warm all around the area in the Caribbean. You know that. You know, we're talking um, in some cases 26, 27, 28 Celsius, especially in the offshore waters. But they're cooling. You see this little tongue of cooler water coming down here. But that's not going to preclude this from becoming a hurricane necessarily. And I just need you to get that. You know, I'm not you know, trying to make sure we understand it has the potential to become a hurricane. And then the reason that matters is because, yes, you start getting more wind issues, more surge issues. But the rainfall is going to be a big problem. We can see that outlined here. The yellows and oranges, you know, this is developing into a high impact event for sure. For a good deal of South Florida where millions of people live. Densely populated area. And we're talking four to six, maybe six to ten. And if this is uh, slower moving, we might see some of these reds in here, which gets into the ten to fifteen. Luckily, this is offshore. But we might start seeing some bullseyes up here. And with the rain that you've already had, the saturated ground, I know your trees are a little bit different in South Florida than what we have up in the Gulf Coast states. The I-10 corridor that's been hammered so hard this year, all the way over to Louisiana included, right? Or the southeast, the Carolinas with Isaias. I know. You have a different set of trees and species and whatnot down here, but they are susceptible when those root balls get wet. They're going to be easier to knock over. So just something to keep in mind. One other thing that could favor this becoming stronger, the ECMWF, uh, Madden-Julian Oscillation, that's what this is. Basically, we're going into the phases here, phases 8 and 1, that favor... Atlantic development, right? You see that right there. It favors the Western Hemisphere and Africa. Bottom line, this equals big check mark favorability, upward motion, and we're heading into that. It's just going to get more favorable uh, over the coming days. That's what the uh, Euro ensembles, these little angel hair pasta lines that you see through here. Those are the ensemble members, and the overall signal is for the Madden Julian oscillation to become more favorable. That with the warm temperatures that we still have, the heat content, etc., it is going to be uh, likely that this is on the stronger side of a tropical storm and maybe even a hurricane. And yes, we're going to have some wind impacts. But this is the big threat right now that we know, as much as we can know, that is coming, and that is the potential for some very, very heavy rain. All right, I am going to be leaving... Uh, Wilmington, North Carolina, within the next few hours with Mike Farrow, my good friend and colleague. And, hey, there's Mike Cornelius. Um, and he's saying, leaning towards you should go down today. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Let's text him back in real time. We'll just put a big resounding yes. All right. Um, one of the many mics that we work with. Uh, I will be working with Mike Farrow, my good friend and colleague here in Wilmington, North Carolina. We're going to leave in a few hours. 
and we're going to take some equipment down to Florida, and we're going to do what we do. Uh, this is different. It's going to be a big urban setting, a lot of people, not a big powerful hurricane coming in where millions of people are going to evacuate, so it's going to be a little bit different setup. We're going to have a lot more traffic to deal with. Just everything gets more complicated when people have not evacuated. And in this situation, I don't think they're going to have to, except for some limited areas. We will be covering this, if you don't know, uh, on YouTube, free of charge. Once we are up and running tomorrow, the live stream will start. And then we will be setting out up to eight live camera systems. This entire project is funded and coupled with Patreon, our crowdfunding um, entity that we work with. You know, Patreon is a crowdfunding uh, portal in and of itself. It's not like PayPal where it's just a money collector. It's a portal. It's pretty neat. I'll show you. I'll show you real quick what this looks like just in case. I know a lot of you already know and if you do you can go ahead and tune out now because you get it already. But you become a member. It's like a cooperative and you get access to a lot more um, and you can read the descriptions here. All these different things. Our cameras, the GoPro cameras, we show you those first. Our digital dashboard, our live chat. But then Patreon itself has its own sort of micro universe of blogging, Facebook type posting. I can post pictures, videos. We have Jack Sillen who posts for us, a guest meteorologist in training from Cornell. I mean, come on, that's pretty awesome. Uh, and all of that is included in Patreon. And then we connect it to our Hurricane Track Insider site. And that's what we have here. So we connect it to Hurricane Track Insider. And then you get a whole list of other tools. There's our chat. These are real people that live and breathe. These are not fake robots or whatever you call it. These are our uh, supporters. These are, these are them. So we have this live chat just for you guys. Then our awesome, unbelievable, I mean, this is the coolest tracking map that you will find anywhere. It's got all kinds of layers. We turn on our cameras. They show up. See them over there in the northwest part. Um, you have when we activate our weather stations, those turn on, uh, watches and warnings turn on, all kinds of layers, absolutely incredible. Even radar, which there's not much going on in the lower 48 right now. There's some down there in the Caribbean. This is what you have access to. You can zoom down, change this over to street level if you want to. Yeah, this is not available anywhere else, not like this. And then when we put these cameras out, wherever we put them throughout this region, probably down in the Keys too, you'll see those views as well. Pretty remarkable. Then everything shows up in our digital dashboard. This is all left over from Zeta, where we were down in Mississippi, so that we were at Courthouse Pier, we were Bay St. Louis. All of these will change, and they will reflect Florida. I think I'm going to take eight cameras with me for this event, and we even have our vehicle cam, and you can even track that vehicle cam. Where are we? Where are Mark and Mike? Where are they? You can track us. It's all connected through Patreon. That's how we do it. It starts at the $10 level, and it goes far beyond just hurricane season. It is a growing, crowdfunded project that supports this whole thing, and it is absolutely incredible. And we can bring you, because of that, this is my job, and you guys pay my paycheck. Uh, I got my paycheck for the month of November yesterday. And it is absolutely wonderful to be able to have this dependably, but also to be able to fund that we need to go now, we can go and we can load up the truck and be all set and, pro and provide this coverage like nobody else can. And I would argue that it's at least as good as, and in some regards even better, because you have a lot more of these options with these cameras with no commercials, zero, than television. It goes beyond television. It's just true. It's beyond TV. Hurricane Track Insider, beyond television. That's a good tagline. All right, well, let me shut up and post this and get moving. Uh, we will be driving today. No live stream today, but yes, live stream tomorrow. Publicly available, the vehicle cam on YouTube. And all along, we will be talking about what's going on. Uh, oh, and by the way, Brent from the Virgin Islands, if you know Brent and all of the works he's done with us, he's coming. So it'll be Mike, Mark, and Brent down in Florida as we deal with eventually could be Hurricane Ada again. As always, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate your time and attention. I am Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you again as we head south to Florida to track this next storm.